Chapter 5. On that day, Deborah and Bedak, son of Abinoam, sang this song. When Israel's leaders take charge and the people gladly follow, bless the Lord. Listen, you kings, pay attention, you mighty rulers, for I will sing to the Lord. I will lift up my song to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you set out from Seir and marched across the fields of Edom, the earth trembled and the cloudy skies poured down rain. The mountains quaked at the coming of the Lord. Even Mount Sinai shook in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, and in the days of Jael, people avoided the main roads and travelers stayed on the crooked side paths. There were few people left in the villages of Israel until Deborah arose as a mother for Israel. When Israel chose new gods, war erupted at the city gates, yet not a shield or spear could be seen among 40,000 warriors in Israel. My heart goes out to Israel's leaders and to those who gladly followed. Bless the Lord. You who ride on fine donkeys and sit on fancy saddle blankets, listen. And you who must walk along the road, listen. Listen to the village musicians gathered at the watering holes. They recount the righteous victories of the Lord and the victories of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord marched down to the city gates. Wake up, Deborah, wake up, wake up, wake up and sing a song. Arise, Barak, lead your captives away, son of Obinoam. Down from Tabor marched the remnant against the mighty. The people of the Lord marched down against mighty warriors. They came down from Ephraim, a land that once belonged to the Amalekites, and Benjamin also followed you. From Machir the commanders marched down. From Zebulun came those who carry the rod of authority. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah and Barak. They followed Barak, rushing into the valley, but in the tribe of Reuben there was great indecision. Why did you sit at home among the sheepfolds to hear the shepherds whistle for their flocks? In the tribe of Reuben there was great indecision. Gilead remained east of the Jordan, and Dan, why did he stay home? Asher sat unmoved at the seashore, remaining in his harbors, but Zebulun risked his life, as did Nephtali on the battlefield. The kings of Canaan fought at Teanach near Megiddo's springs, but they carried off no treasures of battle. The stars fought from heaven. The stars in their orbits fought against Sisera. The Kishon River swept them away. That ancient river, the Kishon, march on my soul with courage. Then the horse's hooves hammered the ground. The galloping, galloping of Sisera's mighty steeds let the people of Miraz be cursed, said the angel of the Lord. Let them be utterly cursed, because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty warriors. Most blessed is Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. May she be blessed above all women who live in tents. Sisera asked for water, and Jael gave him milk in a bowl fit for kings. She brought him yogurt. Then, with her left hand, she reached for a tent peg, and with her right hand, she reached for the workman's hammer. She hit Sisera, crushing his head. She pounded the tent peg through his head, piercing his temples. He sank. He fell. He lay dead at her feet. From the window, Sisera's mother looked out. Through the window, she watched for his return, saying, why is his chariot so long in coming? Why don't we hear the sound of chariot wheels? A reply comes from her wise woman, and she repeats these words to herself. They are dividing the captured goods they found, a woman or two for every man. There are gorgeous robes for Sisera, and colorful, beautifully embroidered robes for me. Lord, may all your enemies die as Sisera did. But may those who love you rise like the sun at full strength. Then there was peace in the land for forty years.